um, do the two uh, four to eight cylinder fire motors. So the first one, one five four two six three seven eight. How do we figure out mating cylinders? One and a half, six, three, seven, eight. So one and six are mates. Five and three, four and seven, two and eight. And it's uh, 720 degrees, an eight cylinder. How far apart are our firing intervals? 90 degrees. <coughs> Let's stroke start at TDC and come down. Power and intake. And let's stroke start at the bottom and go up. Compression and exhaust. We have to go around twice to get all 720 degrees in. <coughs> and our firing intervals are 90 degrees, so there is 90 degrees. So firing order one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number one is coming down on power. What's number one's mate? Six. Six. What's it doing? Intake. Coming down on intake. So I put number one here. What's next in the firing order? Where's five go? Next. Where's it go? Next. 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 Okay. So. If number one is on power, the next in the firing order you said is five. We said that uh, on this side, everything goes down. On this side, everything goes up. So the next in the firing order is five. What direction is it going? Up. What are the two upstrokes? Compression and exhaust. Which one do you want to pick? Compression. It's going up on compression. Next in the firing order? Four. Going up or coming down? Up. Going up on compression. They're both on compression because a stroke is traveling from BDC to TDC or TDC to BDC. It's 180 degrees. But these are how far apart? 90 degrees. So they're both on the same stroke. What comes next? Two. Up or down? Down on intake. Next. Six. Up or down? Down. down. On intake. We've already got it. How do we get that? Mating cylinders. Okay, next. Three. Three. Up or down? Up. On. Exhaust. Exhaust. Next. Seven. Up or down? Seven. On. Seven. Exhaust as well. And lastly? Eight. 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 Where's it going? Down. Down, on power. Everybody okay with that? Okay, now what I'm going to do is rather than redraw this, we're going to put the other firing order on here as well. So, one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. So, we split it in half one and six. Five and three, seven and four, two and eight are all mates, right? What do we notice? The same mates are the same mates, right? Right? It's like these two are mates or these two are mates, right? It doesn't matter which order we put them in, they're still mates. So, <clears throat> one, three, seven, Two, six, five, four, and eight. Everybody okay with that? We'll just do it here.
number one is on power. How do we know that? Because I said it, okay? I have to tell you one of them. You can't do it unless I tell you one. Uh, Mr. Sprint, what's the next in the firing order? Watch us up here. I don't know. We have to do mates now. Okay, what's our what's our mating cylinder here? Seven, seven. Six is our mate, right? So what's if one is on power, what's six doing? Intake. Down on intake. Whoops, sorry. Down on intake. All right. So one's the start of the firing order. Next is three. Is three going up or coming down? Uh, on. Compression. Next? Seven. Seven. Up or down? Uh, on? Compression. Next? Two. Up or down? Down. On Eight. intake. Okay, it's right here. Next? Two. Up or down? Two. We already got it. How do we know? Eight. Meeting Eight. cylinders. Okay, halfway through, we're on the right track. Next? Five. Five. Up or down? Up. On? Exhaust. Exhaust. Next, four, up or down, uh, on, exhaust. exhaust again, and lastly, Eight. up or down, yeah. on, power. Okay, so if we look at these two firing orders, they're both five liter Ford firing orders. What do we notice about the mating cylinders with the two firing orders? They're the same mating cylinders, right. So what makes mating cylinders in an engine? What determines what cylinders are mated? A component in the engine. The crankshaft. The crankshaft determines mating cylinders. And matter of fact, when we're looking at that end on, we've got one and six up here. Okay, they're the mates on that crankshaft. And then over here we got three and five as mates. Here we got two and eight, four and seven down at the bottom. Okay, the crankshaft determines mating cylinders. What determines the firing order in an engine? Ignition. A lot of people think that, that it's ignition. Okay, I can put the spark plug wires anywhere I want. Anybody ever done a tune up and put the spark plug wires on the wrong spot? Okay, you made your own firing order. Does it work? Nope. Why not? What causes the valves to open and close? The camshaft. So the camshaft determines firing order. Crankshaft determines mating cylinders. Camshaft determines our firing order. So what some people actually do is they'll have a low output 5 liter. They'll buy a replacement camshaft that has the same firing order as a high output and they'll put it into their low output. It changes the firing order. It doesn't make the engine a high output. It just changes the firing order. And then all you have to do is take the spark plug wires and put them so that they're at the right spot at the right time. Does that make sense? So sort of a, a, a fairly long lesson on this, but now we need to know why do we need to know this? How are we going to apply it? Well, there's a couple reasons. Um, one of them would be um, you're working on a vehicle and let's say you have to do an intake manifold gasket. Anyone ever had to do an intake gasket on a V8? Okay, it's a distributor engine. So uh, we give you the vehicle, you've got to take off the intake. To take the intake off, what has to happen to the distributor? Hello. Distributor has to come out. So when I take the distributor out, what am I going to do to it? Most people will mark it, right? They'll mark it so that they know that's where the rotor's pointing, so that they take it out and they set it over on the workbench, and then they take the intake off and they clean the gasket all up and put the new parts back in and then put the distributor back in. So, a little game that we used to play at the shop that I worked, it, it was called Mess with the Apprentice. Okay. Anybody work at any place where that happens all the time? Yeah. The apprentice is always the one that's at the, the butt end of all the jokes, right? So if you were the apprentice and you were up getting the parts, while you've marked the distributor, I would go over and turn the engine over. The distributor's out, 
I turn the engine over, you come back, you put the intake gasket on, you go to put the distributor in, uh-oh. Now, this joke only works if you can't get the engine to start, right? If you get the engine to start, now I look not very smart because I just pulled a prank on you that didn't work, right? So, or similar thing could be, vehicle comes in and it needs a replacement engine, a crate engine. Has anyone ever had to put a crate engine in before? So a crate engine, does it come with the distributor in it? No. So I want to put the distributor in before it goes into the vehicle. Um, or maybe I want to adjust the valves, but let's just say for now I want to put the distributor in. Depending on the vehicle that you're working in, you may want to have that distributor in before the engine goes in because on some engines, there's so much of the cowl that comes over the engine that you can't get the distributor in otherwise, right? Well, I have to know how to put the distributor in without the engine running. And I didn't mark this engine. It's a brand new crate engine that came to me. So I have to be smart enough to know how do I put the distributor in, either in this crate engine or in the engine that the licensed tech just messed with me while I was getting the parts, okay? So really easy if you understand mating cylinders how we do this, okay? What we have to do is we have to install the distributor so that the rotor is pointing at the cylinder that's about to fire. So what I can do is I can take a Johnson bar, put it on the crankshaft, and turn the crank until I'm at number one top dead center compression, right ready to fire. Now how do I know if an engine has number one top dead center ready to fire? Oh, who said that? Who said that? Nice, great, great. It's like a ventriloquist, sound like your voice was up here. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at one and its mate to see what the valves are doing. Now, if I'm turning the engine over, I, I've got this sitting on an engine stand, okay? I put a Johnson bar on there, I start cranking the engine over, I watch the valves on number one. If number one is about to fire, what are the valves gonna do? <coughs> They're gonna do nothing, right? <coughs> Watching nothing, does that tell us very much about anything? If I watch you doing nothing, does that let me know what you're doing? No, I have no idea it's better to have some sort of positive indicator as to what's going on. So rather than watching one, maybe the valves are out of adjustment and they're just not moving, right? If I watch its mate, okay, and in this case here, its mate is six, if I'm turning the engine and number one is about to fire, its mate, number six, what did we say it would be on? Intake. intake. What happens at intake? What happens at intake for us is that the exhaust valve is open and the intake valve is going to start to open. So the exhaust valve is open and it's gonna go closed and the intake <laughs> valve will open in its place. They call that valve overlap or the valve rocking position because the valves are doing that. So I watch number one valves, they do nothing. I watch number six valves, they rock. I now know that as I'm bringing that up so that the harmonic balancer indicator is lining up with zero, that I must be bringing number one up ready to fire. So now I take the distributor, I align the rotor with where number one's supposed to be, I drop it into the intake, in the back of the engine, tighten it up, and I'm ready to go. Did I have my distributor marked? No, I couldn't have it marked on anything because it was a crate <coughs> engine, or if I did have it marked, the license guy moved it on me, okay? So that's one way to know how to, how to install the distributor using mating cylinders. One other way that you can do it is you can have someone crank the engine over for you and you go to cylinder number one and you hold your thumb over the spark plug hole. What will you find? When it's coming up ready to fire, it's coming up on compression, right? So you hold your thumb there till you feel the pressure on it and then you look down at the harmonic balancer, you bring it until number one lines up. Now we know that we're at top dead center, ready to fire number one, I can drop the distributor in. Does that make sense for everyone? So we need to know what's going on with all our cylinders so that I can figure out how am I going to determine if I look at what six is doing, what's going on with one? Well, they're mates, right? Does that make sense? 
we want to know how to put the distributor in because we want to, has anyone ever seen someone put a distributor in and they go, it's out 180 degrees? Anybody seen that? What that means is they turned the harmonic balancer around until it lined up with zero and then they just guessed and dropped it in. It was either one that was a top dead center or ready to fire or it was six that was ready to fire. They put it in and number six was ready to fire. So that meant that the crankshaft was out by 360 degrees, but it meant that the camshaft was out by 180 degrees and the distributor's driven off the camshaft, right? So we would have had to turn it 180 degrees. So when we're working on, say, that crate engine, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to put the distributor in, connect up all of the fuel lines, connect up the coolant lines, the wiring, everything like that, fill it up with oil and coolant, then we wanna jump in, touch the key and have it start up. Now, do any of you work in shops where uh, you've seen people take an engine apart, put it back together, and then they go in and they crank, 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 until they get the, the battery goes dead and then they put a booster on, <laughs> they're boosting the battery, and they're messing around with that engine for half an hour or an hour to get it started. Has anyone seen that before? What's bad about that? What can happen? You can wipe out the top end of the engine. You can wipe out the camshaft. What do camshafts need to survive? Oil. Oil. Do they get oil very much while we're cranking? No. No. They don't get enough volume of oil to make that lubrication system work very well. So the camshaft, you can take a brand new camshaft and wipe it by prolonged cranking because we don't get enough oil up to the top. So what we want to do is we want to always have our engine so that we don't have to crank it very long. So you get in, you touch the key, it starts up. So wouldn't it be great if you were working at a shop and they gave you a crate engine and said, here, put this thing in, and you could put the thing in, connect everything all up, jump in, touch the key, and it starts right away. How would that feel? That'd be pretty good, eh? Because the license guys, I bet a lot of the license guys can't do that, right? You do that, all of a sudden, looks like you know what you're doing, right? It looks like you actually learned something while you were at school. So if you apply this that we use, then uh, that helps you to know how do I put these pieces in? What's the relationship between what's going on with my crankshaft, what's going on with my pistons, my valves, my camshaft? They all come together. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat>